Jamming on the beach. Jamming on the beach. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Legacy Speaks. It's about that time, y'all. The year is coming to an end and it's finally here. We're knee deep into that whole new year, new me kind of season. You know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all are probably surrounded by racks and magazines with a glue stick right in your hand right now, going to town on that vision board. <laughs> By all means, there's nothing wrong with putting it out there in the atmosphere, but let's be honest. How many of those goals actually get accomplished? We all know about the SMART formula, you know, creating goals that are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time sensitive, and blah, 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 blah. But we require something that's beyond the superficial level that will help us remain committed to carrying out these goals. And trust me, I get it, y'all. Although I have most of my first quarter planned out for 2018, I know that I'm gonna eventually deal with bouts of lack of motivation, disinterest, misuse of time, and I may look like I have it all together, y'all, but Jesus be a Google Calendar. <laughs> So with that in mind, I recognize that I'm gonna to have to take on a new perspective and a new approach to this upcoming year to ensure that these wins from 2017 continue to happen. And I was thinking, you know, maybe we should tackle this together. I mean, why not? We're practically homies now, you know? So you, y'all family. And since we're hella cool like that, since we're practically family, I'm gonna need y'all to hit that subscription button below. That way you can stay up to date on newly released content on a regular basis. So let's dive right in. I want to begin by sharing what has been working for me and then move into what I plan to implement in the near future. Usually when I'm planning, I start off with a theme for the year. For example, 2017 was the year of discipline, 2016 was the year of yes, 2015 was the year of purpose, and 2014 was the year of faith. Each theme word pretty much set the tone for how I wanted to operate and function in the year. In 2014, I knew that I was planning on quitting my job and moving to Metro Atlanta to pursue something that was completely opposite of my degrees. So that required a lot of faith. In 2015, I started conceptualizing Legacy Speaks and going after opportunities that would help me grow professionally. So that spoke to my purpose. 2016, I decided that no matter how big, outlandish, or scary, or seemingly impossible my dream or opportunity was, I decided to say yes to it in spite of my fears. I'm pretty sure you get the drift by now, but I always start my year off with a specific word in mind. And I know some of you guys are like, how do you know what word to focus on? What if I wanna change it? Good questions. Well, something I also do is conduct a year in review. What are some things that I needed to accomplish but wasn't able to get around to? What is something this year that I learned specifically that I wanna primary focus on and make a priority in the next year? I try to keep the word broad enough so that a lot of things can fall under the theme, yet specific enough that I'm staying on track. For example, discipline was my focus for 2017. That meant that I wanted to become more disciplined in all of my behaviors, creating and implementing more positive and rewarding habits so that I can become more productive with my time and energy. I try to keep the word broad enough so that a lot of things can fall under the theme, yet specific enough to ensure that I'm staying on track. For example, discipline was my focus for 2017. That meant that I wanted to become more disciplined in my behaviors, creating and implementing more positive and rewarding habits so that I could become more productive with my time and energy. So starting and running Legacy Speaks requires discipline. Growing as a single Christian woman requires discipline. Operating in a spirit of excellence in my schoolwork, at my internship, and in other life roles requires discipline. You see what I'm saying? So I created a list of personal, spiritual, and professional goals and assess what they all had in common with each other. And to answer your question, yes, you can change your theme work for the year. I personally don't, but sometimes what I end up doing is having a subset of words which eventually become focus words for future years to come. Another practice that I will continue to implement is journaling. I'm a firm believer of writing things down, whether it's in a notebook or a memo on my phone or a sticky note on my computer's desktop. I always have random passages and pages jotted down so I can go back and review what was on my mind. It's a great way of holding myself accountable. Honestly though, you really have to be a person who gets convicted by not accomplishing what was written down. When I was younger, I used to write checklists and stick them on the fridge and I was not satisfied until everything on that list was checked out. And you may call that obsessive, but I call it helpful. My life verse is Habakkuk 2.3, but the verse before, which is verse two, says that we should write the vision and make it plain so that the one who reads it may run, and I firmly believe that. It's something about reading your goals and heart's desires that creates this spirit of motivation. It also puts me in check because if I've been slacking and not meeting my own expectations, then I know that it's time for me to pick it up and make something shake. So that way I can make sure that the words that are written down actually come to life. Now here's the fun part, working to break bad habits. <laughs> 
I know it's hard, right? But before you get all worked up, remember that Oprah was not built in a day, so take it one day at a time. One cognitive behavioral therapy principle states that in order to get rid of a bad habit, you must replace it with something more positive and realistically accomplishable, for a lack of better words. So for me, my issue this year included not utilizing all of my time appropriately. I would get distracted by those darn Facebook videos and just social media in general. I realized that I could have gotten a lot more done if I would just put the phone down and unplug from those platforms. So first I had to accept the fact that because I was wasting time, I wasn't living up to my fullest potential. And I know you guys hear me reference mindfulness a lot, but it's really key when it comes to personal development. Having the courage to be real with yourself and say, damn, nobody's holding me back with me. It really takes that type of character. So cut the blame game and get out of denial because you need to learn how to identify what's in your control and whatever's not in your control, just learn how to circumvent that. I know that I just can't quit social media because that's how I manage my platform. But what I can do is limit the time that I spend on it, creating boundaries and time limits that I can grow to honor. Now, don't forget that I have to replace the bad with the good, right? So I reduce the time I spend on social media, but what's next? If I don't dedicate that newfound time to something else, then all I will do is just find myself back to square one. But I got y'all. That's where your smart goals come in. Choose no more than four things that you specifically want to accomplish throughout your day. I want to work on having a better body, so I plan to work out a minimum of 60 minutes a day. I want to gain increased knowledge in my field, so I plan to read a minimum of one journal or article a day. I want to strengthen my character as a woman in Christ, so I want to delve deeper in the Word more intentionally by scheduling more time to commune with God. Things like that. And that's the key word for everything, being intentional. That was exactly my supporting word for this year. In order to have discipline, you must also be intentional with your thoughts, actions, and emotions. Rewinding back a little bit to what's in your control versus what's not in your control. You can't let what's not in your control stop you. There's always an answer to a problem, and if there isn't, come up with some alternative solutions or create the opportunity for yourself. I remember going to see Bishop T.D. Jakes on his book tour for SOAR and he was saying that we have a way of praying to God for a table when the irony is he's giving us trees. Basically, for those who couldn't catch that hell of a word, stop selling for just waiting, hoping, and praying for your dreams to come true. It takes faith, wisdom, understanding, and work to make things happen. You are your greatest weapon. You are your greatest asset. Leverage your skills and current resources to acquire more skills and resources. Y'all out here quoting Migos talking about some flipping the bag and tumbling it when y'all need to be learning how to flip yourselves. Hmm. And trust me, I'm speaking to myself also while I'm saying this to y'all. Where if the M lead, remember? <laughs> but yes, I hope that this helped you in some shape, form, or fashion when planning your year. I personally plan to be more intentional when it comes to my time and holding myself more accountable by abiding by my calendar and connecting with people who are excelling as well because iron sharpens iron. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Legacy Speaks. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to subscribe and share, y'all. And definitely, definitely, definitely stay connected via Legacy SPKS on everything. Until next time.